week's episode is brought to you by Audible. To browse their catalog of more than 150,000 titles and download the free audiobook of your choice, go to yhtv.us forward slash audible. Sign up or log in with your Amazon account and start enjoying your new book today. Hello and welcome to YHTV's Flowing into Awareness with visionary and master intuitive Anatara. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this program. This is episode 36, and it's the best tools for 2014 reboot. <laughs> I wonder what she has in store for us today. Welcome, Anatara. Hi, Christina. Okay, we're rebooting. <laughs> we are. We can't do anything about it. <laughs> Isn't that great? Even in, in the intuitive world, we use the word reboot that is so much into technology. Well, it, 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 it makes sense. You know, some of these technological terms, they just make so much sense yes. because it's, 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 it's a reboot. It's, it's a redoing. It's an over, you know, it's a getting out with, out with the old, in with the new. You yes. know, a reboot is a reboot. <laughs> Start again. Start again. <laughs> You're start allowed. again with start again with the hardware that you have, but start again. <laughs> right, right. You are allowed. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> well, yeah. the 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 in, 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 the idea for this for this topic, you know, the, the I, I almost wanted to call it the Great 2014 Reboot or Tools for the Great 2014 Reboot. <laughs> it it came to me because I was I was very very ill in March and part of April. Mm. Um, and, and the illness, I'll explain it a bit in a minute, but the illness completely, it completely undid me. It undid me physically. Uh, it didn't undo me mentally or emotionally or spiritually, but physically I, I was erased. I was completely erased. Um, I had been in Mexico for four weeks and swimming and playing and lying in the sun and just enjoying life to the nth degree, being my mermaid self, being very, very strong physically from all the swimming and snorkeling. And I came home and after a week of being at home, I, I got really, really sick, sicker than I have ever consciously, you know, that I can remember in, in this life, in this 60 years. Mm. And, and the, um, it started with with um, immense pain in my abdomen, which meant, made, meant that I couldn't really eat or move, literally for almost six weeks. So, and and I, I want to say to no one worries that I'm I'm fine now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and you you would have fooled us totally if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so true. Uh, and and I had a quite an incredible. Um, you know, healing, I could say healing journey, that's a term that's used a lot, a, a, quite a bit of a, of a healing expedition. Mm. And, and, I, and I noticed many things through that. And I, and I noticed this concept of being rebooted. And I'll get back to that in just a minute. But what I want, what I want to say about it is that I didn't, you know, I didn't eat for 10 days. I was only drinking. And I watched my physical body literally disappear. All of my muscle mass vanished. All of my, the, the integrity, the physical vibrancy that I usually, that I usually feel and live with, it was gone. I lost mm. 10 pounds. I, the muscle was gone. I could barely stand up without teetering or, or being dizzy. I couldn't climb the stairs. There was just no oomph, no zest left there. And, and I got a sense partway through this, the first week of not eating that, that, I was being called to, or my body was being called to remake itself. Mm. That it was that it was eliminating, that it was cleansing, that it was putting aside many things that it was carrying that perhaps it didn't need. So the weight, the weight, although I wasn't overweight at all, was one of those things. The the muscle, you know, that was another thing. You know, and, and involved with one's body image are all of those ideas that we have about who we are, what we are, uh, whether we're strong, whether we're not, whether we look good, whether we don't. Um, and and in terms of the way we eat, we all have. So many perceptions about mm -hmm. what's right to eat and what's wrong to eat. So every bit of that was completely evaporated for me. The only thing that I could put into my body for the first 10 days of my illness um, it was water and ginger ale. Wow. <laughs> and, and the ginger ale was, was amazing. It, it gave, me a, gave me flavor. It felt like I was doing something good for myself. But in general, I, you know, I looked down at, at you know, pop and soda. I wouldn't even consider drinking it. <laughs> I was going to say, interesting choice. <laughs> but it was what I knew I could assimilate. Mm -hmm. It was what mm -hmm. I knew I could take in. So there's a mental reboot that's going along with the physical reboot. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the reboot being just 
starting over, erasing all of the programs, erasing the, the physical integrity, and finding out what you can do to to bring it back to where it was or to bring it back to whatever its new place was. As I as I lay in bed for six weeks, I I had, you know, there, there were op- there was opportunity for all sorts of thought to happen. I should be working. I should be able to get up. I should feel better by now. Mm. Um, I I should do something else about this, you know, as well as what I was doing to heal myself. And and I realized that that was just a silly bunch of of of, of jabber. Mm-hmm, <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it meant it meant nothing to the part of me that was already fully engaged in the remake, in the reboot, in the mm. re-becoming something. And I and I really hmm. When, when when we use the term re reboot remake, it, it's almost as if we are trying to go back to something else. So I'm starting to see that perhaps that isn't exactly the right description of what was going on. I knew that I wanted to be physically strong again, but was I going to be physically strong in the way I was before? I knew that I wanted to be able to in, in um, you know, continue with all of my intuitive work. But was my intuitive work going to be the same as it had been before? Those mm-hmm. were all things I didn't know. And in the in the allowance of and the surrender to being immobilized and not able to eat and not able to think, and my intuition was a bit, I would say, a bit fuzzy, but always there with me. More than anything, I had to completely open to the, to the all that is to whatever was going to come to me, to whatever was available to me. And some of you might think, well, don't you do that already? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I would say, yes, I do. And I do so more than, than most of us do. But there was another level of it there for me to find. There was another mm. level there for me to see and to identify with. Mm-hmm. Identify with in a in a non identification type of way, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, just to see it and to say, oh yes, that applies to me. Um, I at, at one point in my illness, I was every time I opened my eyes with my eyes closed and and with my eyes open, I saw right through the physical matter that was around me. I saw right through everything that that was uh, here or was supposed to be here, and I saw saw that that as a flimsy or sort of a filmy definition, and I could see right through it and out into the cosmos. When I reached mm. what I call the cosmos, the, you know, beyond the atmosphere of the Earth, I could then see galaxies and stars and other, mm. and other solar systems. And it was as real to be in, in that realm as it was to be in my body, doing its re, mm-hmm. do, create, recreating itself in my bed. Mm. Okay, so so it struck me that so many of the clients that I work with and people that I talk to, they're looking to find a, a release, that's it, a release from what they're in, whatever that might be. It might be a bad relationship, a bad job, feeling sick all the time, feeling unhappy, being anxious. It could be many, many different things. But so many of us feel that we're that we're caught in a, in a, in a vice or in a, in, a, in a container that doesn't really describe or speak to who we are or what we are. And if we could, you know, have you ever, how many times have you heard people say, if I could only just start this again, if I, <laughs> right. if I could, if I could please just do this over again, I would sometimes, but we don't know what that I would is. Yeah, exactly. How, how would I do it differently? What would be different about it? And, and I, and really I can say that I, this gave me that experience. It gave me that opportunity. And, and so I, I've been transferring the, the lightness that I feel about who I am now to the work that I do. Um, my intuition is just so delightfully, lusciously easy. And, and it, mm. it was easy before I thought now it's more so, <laughs> um, my, you know, the, 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 the statements that I can make to bring out um, a comment from a client who's who's struggling with something. It's just they're 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 so so direct, so beautifully, lovingly direct that you know some of my clients have said to me, "Wow, <laughs> you you you've really you've really changed." So change is not really what I was looking at. Change is is not necessarily part of the part of the reboot or the remake or the redo, but 
it, it's more like a it's more like a new discovery. It's a new discovery of how I can be, how mm. I can work and function within the world, how I can relate to the things around me. That's a big part of it. It's not just how we behave, but how do I relate to the things things around mm. me? Mm -hmm. So. I mentioned in, in part of the write-up for this, this episode that some of the tools that we've been, a lot of us have been working with for what it seems like forever, <laughs> that didn't seem to be making any difference in the way that we think or the way that we perceive things. I am noticing that with the new energies of 2014, that those things are working now. Mm. And and I could I could you know think of a few things you know such as um, meditation uh, you know repeating mantras to ourselves those things seem to be having a greater effect than they used to mm -hmm. but I believe that the thing that's having the greatest effect that's making the biggest change of all is an allowance to just to sort of shake things off and imagine that we're unplugging from something. You know, we're unplugging from all of the definitions of ourselves. We're unplugging from what's happening around us in the, in the terrors of the world. We're unplugging from having to be anything or do anything. And, and that unplugging seems to be, it seems to be more real than it used to be. Mm. It seems to actually be having an effect. So to me, you know, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for all these things that we've been trying to do for ourselves for so long to come to a place where they actually do happen mm -hmm. and, and we, we make an attempt or we look at ourselves and something changes that is happening. And I, and I want to encourage people not to give up yet. <laughs> and, <laughs> A reboot doesn't have to be as sophisticated or uh, sophisticated, maybe not, but it doesn't have to be as in-depth as mine was. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be as, as dramatically, devastatingly uncomfortable <laughs> and painful or as, as, you know, sort of all-encompassing as mine was. You don't all have to go out and lose 10 pounds and, and be able to see through into the cosmos. Your reboot could be something really, really simple. Mm -hmm. it, it could be so, so delicately tangible now that you actually see it and it happens just because you notice it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but believe and understand that this is a time when you can erase a lot of the things that are um, stymieing you, mm -hmm. keeping you feeling caught, um, keeping you feeling stuck. You can get rid of them. You really can. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and maybe just by acknowledging that you admit <laughs> that there's something holding you back, you can get through to see what that is and it'll shift. It'll shift quickly. It'll shift mm -hmm. easily. It, it will shift lovingly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And <sighs> wow. That's, uh, <laughs> you were about to say some more, Anatara. Well, j just that it, it, it can be really easy and, mm -hmm. and we don't have to withhold, we don't have to withhold from ourselves the, um, the willingness to change the willingness to admit things about ourselves, the, admit, the willingness to change. You know, we hold, we hold that back. We, we shy away from it. We don't want to do it. Forget all that. Mm -hmm. Be willing to just let whatever's happen, happening happen because it already is. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're all feeling you know, scared in some ways, overwhelmed in some ways, that you want to hide in some ways. Let it happen. If you need to hide for a week or so, go ahead and hide and then come back and see what you found. Oh, love that. See you later. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. No, I, I love what you have shared on Atari because it's really true. And, and uh, what we had said earlier was, you know, this is, you know, the reboot for 2014. We're almost in the middle of the year right now. And things are shifting so fast. When I have little young children look at me, you know, six, seven, eight year olds look at me and went, oh, it's the end of the year. It's the end of the school year. And they're completely baffled and surprised. When children start feeling that speed of time change, that means we as adults is like four times the speed. You know, I, don't you remember in school when you'd go, oh, when is this year going to be over? When is this year going to be over? Now it's like the children are even going, oh, we don't have enough time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> amazing and I, I love what you're saying about just just uh, you know sometimes we we almost need 
as a human race to get to a certain point in our lives where we are spent in whatever way it might be, body, mind, spirit, just spent and feeling possibly a little lost, scared, as you mentioned, to really come to that point where we're willing to let go because we're too darn tired. You know, I was like, I'm exhausted. What next? You know, I, I that's know it, where it starts, the reboot. It, it, it does. That's exactly where it starts. And look what happened to me, the, the complete physical oh, yes. annihilation of everything that I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're and still to, here. <laughs> and 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 then to lie still for six weeks and then to rebuild physically. Yes. To re to renew, you know, it's bring really, the nutrition yes. back, bring the exercise back, bring the life, the life yes. force in the cells back into cells that have been completely cleansed. Yeah. It's it's just it's a fascinating process. Yeah. I mean, it was it's it's almost and what it sounds like, it's it was a fast of body, mind, spirit. Yes, good. That's an excellent way to describe yes. it. Thank because you. Because I know that when I fast, when other peers mm-hmm. fast, the clarity of mind, and when you were talking about the cosmos and being able to see beyond, yes, yes, it's the mm-hmm. clarity. It's the clarity when you cleanse the body fast and go through that water fast or whatever yeah. fast that might be. It's amazing. That's a really good point. Thank you. I, I, I love discussing this with people because then I, the, the picture is filled out for me. <laughs> you know? And that's and that's just a, a fantastic way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations yeah. Thank to you. that wonderful journey that you've just taken. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, I want to say one last thing, which is so many people watched me go through this and watched me go through this with great fear. You know, what is happening to Anatara? What is wrong with her? Um, she needs to get a certain kind of help or she needs to do this or she needs to do that. And, and oh no, can this keep, you know, will this go on forever? And inside, I always knew that I was, that I was coming through, that I was moving through something that was very important and very required. And, and I want to say that to people, don't necessarily be afraid when someone is in the depths of something that appears to be horrible. Mm-hmm. Ask, ask how you can support whatever is going on for them and, and watch them do the things that that will sort of finalize the reboot. Mm -hmm. If you get scared, say something. If you're feeling okay about it, feel okay about it. But respect that there's something going on there that is important. Yes, yes. Wonderful. (laughs) Well, and, you know, I I really want to share with our audience, um, Anatara, of our Magical Medical Tour show, Mm -hmm. episode 102, um, that we just completed with Dr. Glenn Woolman, (laughs) the science and the intuitive side. (laughs) <laughs> and that show is called Healing in Intuition. I think it's it'll be really, um, you know, it, it would be really wonderful if people watch that show to actually understand mm-hmm. what it is that you went through. It, that, that's very true. We don't in in my show here. It's it's, it's shorter, and I felt that other things about it were more important. But mm-hmm. in the Magical Medical Tour, it's it we really do describe what I went through. Yes. Absolutely. And with other editions. <laughs> with other editions, yes. Yes, you can get to know Anatar even further. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, Anatara. Thank you so much for this wonderful moment of flowing into awareness. This was this was a big one. This mm-hmm. reboot is a big one. And, it is. Uh, yes. Uh, congratulations to any of you who might have gone through it or who might be going through it now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And of course, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're always grateful for your continuous support and look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. Please get in touch with Anatara through her website, anatara.ca, anatara.ca. And if you would like to take a course with Anatara, she has one here at Shop Yoga Hub. It's a six-week uh, course. Um, called The Inner Tutor, which is the first steps on strengthening your intu- intuitive sense. And again, please uh, leave a comment on our site by scrolling down, typing in your comment. We will make sure that Anatara receives it and is able to respond to you or giving us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK. 818-LET'S-TALK. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, namaste.
So there, there are actually two different virus, viruses. They're a little bit similar, but the, the measles that we're having the outbreak with is called, it's a rubiola virus. And the German measles is a rubella virus. And you've heard the word rubella. Most parents have heard that word when they have to hear about vaccinations for their kids, where they have that vaccination, the MMR vaccinations, which is measles, mumps, and rubella. So they mm -hmm. call them mm -hmm. the measles that they